or where I was last time was to finish cutting out the subframe right here. Then I can at least get the frame to get sit closer because this was the highest point that was blocking. Um, get the frame to sit closer to the body and then I can finally fully etch out where the frame is going to have to be cut. So I really don't want to have to cut more than I need. So I'll just get this out of the way first, get it as close as possible, and then I'll figure it out. Um, on this one I didn't mark it much, so I guess I, you know, was going to eyeball it. This one I marked better. I remember all this from this line needed to go, and I think that was the minimum. I don't remember, really don't remember what that line's about. Um, but I think I could retain this top, this top piece. So I'm going to cut right underneath it, and then uh, all the way down right here. And then they're actually symmetrical. I just measured right now, so from... Uh, the end of the A pillar or end of the firewall side right here all the way to the uh, outside edge of the uh, sub original subframe is uh, 15 inches on both sides so I'm just gonna you know take that as gospel and whatever I do to this side that I laid out I'm gonna mirror uh, with measurements on this side It'll be pretty straightforward and you know right now it's just a rough cut anyways but hypothetically get this out retain this plate and then this is what I'm going to build off of. I'm going to build off this and this and, uh, you know, remake the mount for the frame. So, yeah, right now I'm just going to double check measurements and lines and uh, put it on this side. And then I got to, you know, uh, put the new jack points under the uh, foreboard supports that were welded previously. And then um, get the weight off these subframes and then there'll be nothing... Uh, stopping the subframes from being cut out. All right, so right now I'm cutting uh, cutting out this subframe with the torch. And uh, <clears throat> kind of do it in sections, like I'll show you on the other side, but I first cut down this way, and then I, then I remove like the top, and then some of the intersection, and uh, things like that. So I have to do it in sections. I cut this way, and you know, I'm going slow because I'm still like, not 100% sure what I'm doing, but um, as far as rebuilding this, so I just want to make sure I'm not like getting overzealous, but you know, I cut it right here, and then that's where the rest of the subframe's connected, so once this is all gone, then there's no more uh, subframe connection, it just goes from uh, this little torque box to the rocker panel. Um, and then that's the four pan support right there that you're seeing and that's not connected to this it's really close but it's not connected um, and again sometimes it's easier to just cut out sections so like right there at this pinch down there because I don't want to cut that four pan uh, support I might just cut out a square here and then it gives me easy access to where the metals pinched in that last little section so um, sometimes it's best to you know just do it in sections yeah, just taking my time cutting it out. This is a huge step. Um, I'm not sure how much more of this I want to cut out, but I know this was hitting the frame rail. So once this is gone, I can sit the body down on it further. And uh, the goal was to get it almost sitting, the body sitting on the frame, and then I can uh, know exactly where the uh, cut points are going to be for the rest of all the places I have to cut. It's kind of funny. I went back and had to look at one of my old videos of where I said to cut and stuff. Um, so yeah, I went ahead and uh, cut out the whole rocker panel section also on this side. So I'm gonna try to re retain this much and then the part on the, the frame mount for the Crown Vic, theoretically will come off the old body and go on here in place of where I just cut, out, cut that out. Um, but I know there is gonna be some conflict down there uh, with the frame so we'll see um, and of course it's gonna have to a lot of this rocker panel is gonna have to get cut out too so um, I guess we'll see this is really good though to be able to sit the body down on the frame further and actually get it to sit the body will physically sit on the frame now with all this cut out and then I can see exactly where everything's lining up and just so I'm not cutting out too much so now I'm gonna do uh, this side 
And it was funny too, all this dirt. When I got this part cut off and I was in there, I thought this bottom part was way thicker than it was because it had so much dirt and I tried cutting through it and it was just melting and I was melting the sand. Um, I don't know why I wasn't seeing it really good, but yeah, once I cleared out all the sand, the metal is the same thickness as on the bottom too, so as it is right here. Alright, I'm real happy with this with the rest of the subframe out and the front of the tor torque box is off. It's going to really give uh, room for the frame to sit under there where it was hitting before. So theoretically now, I mean this all still needs channeled, but now it can sit flush or even on top of the frame like I've been saying and then I can uh, figure everything else out. Yeah, it went pretty good. I didn't cut through the floorboard. And I didn't really cut through, uh, I got burned a little bit, but I didn't really cut through the uh, supports, foreboard supports. And in reality, once this is done, those are nothing more than just supports for the foreboard. So, but yeah, right now they are kind of structural. But uh, yeah, when I put the, right now with all the weight on it, the foreboard didn't even flex at all, so that's cool. Uh, but the next test is once this is channeled, We'll see how much this is all flexing. Um, but I have a good feeling about everything. Everything seems to be going okay. All right, so I'm going for another test fit right now. Um, this time I have everything removed from the frame. Last time I had all the engine and you know AC stuff still hooked up. Transmission was in, everything is basically out of the way now. Um, I got the rest of the subframe out. You could tell it's, you know, because a lot of this needs notched still. I'm probably not going to say perfect because I should have notched a little bit further over for this test fit, but um, this will be good. And, uh, you know, I'm probably going to go out and set it down and I can, you know, cut that out while it's sitting on top. Just got to be careful. All right, so I got the frame uh, starting to test fit. It's kind of a pain to uh, center this thing under here. Um, but I knew going forward that the wheelbase on this was just like a fraction longer. It was like a quarter or uh, three quarters of an inch longer, I believe, over the wagon. So I knew I was gonna have to make up for that somewhere because I'm not cutting the frame or anything over that. The back wheel is pretty centered right now. I initially had it lined up. And you can see the front wheel favors the front a little bit. So the other thing is I think I originally planned for the frame to be back a little further it's it's barely touching right now and if I can get the frame to come back a little bit it'll fit up in there even better so the goal is to have the offset be in the back which makes more sense because if I put some big tires or something back there it probably won't even matter that much and uh, so basically centered in the front uh, center the hump in the back and then the any offset will be in the center line of uh, this wheel well Which I won't be too big of a deal What's funny is if you look at the Torino, it's all stock It looks like it's a uh, Favors the forward a little bit anyways So this will just be the opposite, it'll just favor the back a little bit. Which hopefully this frame will tuck 
really good uh, so it'll be low but it'll still have full suspension travel and uh, won't look too bad so I'm gonna go ahead and drop the frame uh, what I did was is I put jack stands under the body and the uh, and so I can then jack the frame up into the car which makes sense so I gotta lower the frame again I'll uh, push it back a little bit and jack it up again then once I get it where I want I can start uh, tracing the bottom and figuring out where I'm gonna have to notch everything but yeah definitely way closer uh, and better fit than the first fit All right, it's still not perfect, but I was able to move it back just slightly. Which, you know, that looks, it look, kind of looks centered if you just glance at it, but you can tell it's back just a little. And then the front, you know, it looks pretty centered. Let me see if I can, the other fender's buried. I don't necessarily feel like digging it out right now. Yeah, that's not bad and I mean hopefully this thing will be stanced kind of crazy so like a little little bit of off on the center of the wheels isn't even gonna matter you know I think it's crazy that uh, where the spare tire goes actually hits the frame rail a little bit oh it's sitting on it I didn't notice um, but how this fits up in here so well, I, I removed the bump stops, is crazy. Because theoretically I wouldn't have to cut much of the basement out if it wasn't for the gas tank. But I definitely want the gas tank to stay outside the car. And then, you know, this is basically going to fit in most of the rocker panel. The framer all the way down, because you see that line in the rocker panel, it's the same underneath. So I'm going to cut half so a section is partly rocker panel and into the floorboard and the crown vic if you think about it has a very small rocker panel all the way down the side so once i'm done with this it's almost going to mimic exactly how the rocker panel was on the crown vic and the other thing i think is interesting is these front torque boxes you see how i cut it out the bottom's missing and it cuts out at an angle it almost mimics this frame uh, torque box almost exactly. So, yeah, it's pretty close, and uh, it's you know stupid things are hitting so. Now I'm just gonna. Get, now it's close enough to where I can really see what I need to cut. You know, for channeling this whole section and cutting in here, and this is the part that's gonna be rough trying to figure out what's going on under here. But and then the bumpers should pretty much. Uh, this might need a slight extension, but the bumpers are pretty much going to bolt right on the frame in the stock locations. So again, with the front fender, the bumper basically wraps around right there. So it, it won't be too hard to make uh, custom mounts that'll just bolt the bumper right to the frame and it's going to have it do its job. All right, well, here's the passenger side rocker panel. You can see where I cut out down there the torque box. But the frame is actually favoring the driver's side a little bit because I was fighting the piece in the back. So it's going to need to come over, but look at this hypothetically. Here's the apex of the bottom of the rocker panel, and that's where it's at right now. I need to check the other side. I'm sure it's probably right on this or overhanging but for the sake of like being symmetric and a little bit of breathing room I'm just gonna cut right on this apex gives me a perfect line all the way down I'm gonna do that on both sides and that should get more than enough breathing room and then see how big the rocker panel is 
the frame should pretty much tuck once I channel it widthwise in here and give it room to go up should tuck in there just fine for the most part and it should only overhang equivalent to about where this came out if that maybe a little less Yeah, I'm out here cutting up the rest of the Mercury Marquee body. The uh, I'm cutting out all the frame mounts, so where the there are these little bolts. How hot is this? There are these uh, little square retaining bolts that these are what the body mounts screw into. And see, it's nothing crazy. It's not really. It's not super thick metal. It's not. You know, it's just spot welded on, probably. Are like fused together um, but so I'm gonna reuse these tabs at least these inserts so I'm just cutting them out of the the body right now I'm trying to cut around them so I don't get them too hot or you know cut through them so I'm getting all these out then I'm still a little confused I kind of you know might want to reuse these um, I don't want to I didn't want to reuse this panel but I'm not really sure this would be kind of cool because it gives me the dimensions of the gas tank from here to here. And then I know it's going to fit. So I might use at least this half for at least reference or maybe put this section in the car. Because, you know, it would take a lot of guesswork out of that. Um, but I just I didn't like that whole idea of putting that whole thing in there. But I'm rough cutting this whole thing out right now so I can at least save this section. Then again, I'll just go back through, take out these. Here's that plate that I showed you before. This is what uh, mounts the uh, front. And this is going to kind of go in place of where I cut out the uh, torque box. So, and I'm going to need parts of the firewall, at least for reference. I'm still not really sure if I want to like make my own holes, weld these in, use the whole firewall. Not really sure, but... I think for right now I'm going to at least just cut out the whole firewall so I have everything and so it's grouped together and uh, maybe cut this out with it and then come back later and uh, cut those out. So this should hopefully be all in pieces here pretty soon. You see the body's all cut up. I still got a Cut that last little section up into pieces um, but you know I got I was able to save uh, any firewall pieces I needed there's uh, the torque box pieces torque box pieces so I'll probably cut these B pillars um, but yeah I got all the pieces saved then everything else is cut into sections so it can be scrapped or uh, sold here's all the Mounting points. All right, so in the next video, I'll start uh, doing the cutting on here and uh, getting the frame fully pushed up in. Um, if you guys have any comments, uh, could leave a like, uh, subscribe, that'd be cool. Anything to help uh, grow the channel, I'd appreciate. And, uh, with this, I'm almost thinking about getting a uh, F-150 intake because the throttle body faces forward. And uh, since I'm probably gonna use this motor, I wanna do something a little different.